We have another really busy day on the NHL waiver wire, plus several players have been released from the professional tryouts with various NHL teams and lots of other roster cuts, including some top prospects, have taken place as well. We'll discuss all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a busy, busy day on the NHL waiver wire. Surprisingly, from yesterday's group of players that were placed on waivers, there were no claims. So everybody that cleared uh, can be assigned to their minor league affiliates if their teams wish to do so. Not all the time that that happens. Sometimes teams are just kind of trying to see if another team would claim a player or not. Um, and they can be reassigned at a later time if that works for them better. But I know like in Pittsburgh, for example, with like Alex Nylander, uh, Andreas Johansson, uh, they've already been assigned down to the minors. But I thought they might be some of the players that might possibly have a chance to be picked up. But at the end of the day, nobody uh, budged. There was uh, some interesting names, as there has been for the last two, three days. But it's been a few days since anybody's been claimed. So let's go through the list of players on waivers today. There is a long list here. And like as I mentioned as well, there's also several that have been released from their professional tryout. So on waivers today, which can be available until 2 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow for pickup, includes Detroit Red Wings, Taro Hirose and Jared McIsaac. Austin Zarnick and Brogan Rafferty. The New York Rangers have defenseman Ben Harper and uh, Johnny Brzezinski. The Florida Panthers have Grigory Denisenko. That's an interesting name that I think might get some attention. At one point, he was considered one of the top prospects outside of the NHL uh, after he was drafted. Um, things haven't really materialized for Denisenko uh, during his uh, development year since then. Uh, Alex True as well, uh, former Seattle Kraken. Uh, Matt Kirsted. And Will Lockwood also on waivers today from the Florida Panthers organization. The New York Islanders, Lou likes to do things in bulk. You can tell it comes with his contracts, cuts, and everything. Uh, so no surprise we got a bunch here from the Islanders organization. We got goalie uh, Jakob Skerek, uh, Phil Ledoux, Carson Kuhlman, Otto Koivula, uh, and you got a few others. You get uh, Appleby, Shalowski, Durando, and Hutton. So there's eight players from the Islanders. All on waivers today. I'm not sure that any of them are really, you know, real. I guess maybe Coolman to some degree. Maybe Koivula. I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's going to be a ton of interest there. Uh, San Jose has some interesting names, including Oscar Lindblom, who was actually Mike Greer's first signing after he took over the role of GM with the Sharks uh, after he had been previously uh, bought out of his previous contract with Philly. Um, so Lindblom, Jacob Peterson, and Ryan Carpenter all on waivers for the Sharks today. The Washington Capitals have a, a few here, including uh, Dylan McElrath, Joe Snively, um, Nicholas Obey Kubel. Uh, Scarbosa is also on waivers as well. Uh, Obey Kubel might be somebody that gets attention. Obviously, he had a good run during his time with the Avs, and uh, since then it's kind of bounced around. Obviously, he went uh, to a few teams, including the Leafs, and I believe that's how the Caps picked him up too, was through the waiver wire uh, last year. Uh, the Dallas Stars have defenseman Alex Petrovic. And the Flyers have an interesting name on waivers today, and it's Wade Allison. I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, I thought Allison might make the team, but apparently af after a careful consideration and going through training camp, they determined that he was probably going to be the 13th forward at best and thought they would probably best serve him to get a chance to go somewhere else if they was able to. If not, they'd rather see him go down to the minors and get more of a chance to play regularly rather than be a, a healthy scratch fairly often. So um, so Wade Allison is on waivers. He might be one of those guys that gets some attention. So we'll see. There's definitely some interesting names. There's nothing here that I can say absolutely is like, you know, pretty like, like the high odds of getting picked up. The same thing I've seen in the last few days, but there's more interesting names today than there has been for probably the last couple of days. Now, a bunch of PTOs have been released too. Um, the Carolina Hurricanes actually had a lot of players on PTOs, and I think they released all of them, including Zach Aston Reese. Um, he scored 10 goals for the Leafs last year in a fourth line role. And I actually played pretty well. I was a little bit surprised there was no interest from Toronto to bring him back. Um, and then he goes and doesn't make the Canes. But I, I wonder if he'll get picked up somewhere. Uh, he, to me, he's still an NHL player. I don't know, but he's the biggest surprise of this bunch. Kiefer Bellows, um, he's certainly fallen on tough times. Couldn't make it with Long Island and the Islanders. Uh, went to Philly. Couldn't make it there. Had a chance to go. And I, I 
think Kiefer Bellows' career is probably over, at least in the North America and uh, the NHL. I wouldn't be shocked if he maybe considers going to Europe. Uh, Brendan Perlini was another guy. Uh, Corey Conacher, who also has a contract um, with uh, Chicago in the AHL, who's now an independent team. So he'll report there. Um, I think Perlini might have one there, too. I'm not certain on that, though. Defenseman Nathan Beaulieu is another one. He's been around the league for quite some time. Um Again, went on a PTO. I was a little surprised Carolina was the spot that he ended up going to because they have a pretty deep blue line. I didn't think he really had much of a chance to get a, a top six spot unless they ended up ravaged by injuries. But uh, here we are. Uh, and Nick Shore is another one. It was also there. So Carolina releases all these players. Uh, hard to say what their fates are. I said a couple of these guys will end up in Chicago in the American Hockey League. But otherwise, uh, yeah, something like like – Aston Reese and Bowley especially uh, is the most surprising. Um, I mean, I'm not shocked in a way that they get cut because Carolina's got a really good deep team, but um, it's just hard to imagine that they can't find some kind of a guaranteed spot across all 32 NHL teams right now. Uh, we also have Stefan Matteau, who was on camp at the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's been released from his PTO. And goalie Michael Hutchison, who was in camp with the Detroit Red Wings, also been released. So we haven't really seen anybody yet convert that PTO to a contract. Um, I'm wondering about Josh Bailey with the Senators. Uh, he's still in camp. He's still playing most of the preseason games. And he's been doing media and everything. Like To me, I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. He's going to be signed. I don't know that he's going to be a regular. He probably will play a role for them similar to what Derek Broussard did last year. Um, but he has... He started slow in camp, but he, he's uh, starting to build a little bit of chemistry with a few of his teammates and had a good game last night where he picked up a couple points. And last night against the Jets was pretty much mostly NHL rosters between both clubs. So it was a good test uh, for both sides for sure. Also, some key prospects that have been uh, cut from their NHL rosters and sent to the minors. Of course, these guys don't need waivers, but they're just some names that I know fans are anxious to see. Um, Marco Casper in Detroit, he's been demoted to the AHL. Uh, James Malatesta in Columbus, uh, to me, a highly um, sneaky good, under-the-radar type, really good prospect. Uh, Spencer Knight in Florida. This one is big because they're going to get a, a bigger cap relief because his contract's worth more. But I guess the rationale here is that they have Anthony Stolarz, who they sign as their number three. They figure if they put Stolarz on waivers, there's a good chance he might get claimed. So they don't want to do that. And where Spencer Knight missed a large chunk of last season, uh, after entering the player assistance program, they thought it might be in the best interest of everybody if they send Spencer Knight down, who does not need waivers yet. He can go down, be uh, the the main goalie in their AHL team, get some good reps to kind of get a good rhythm going, get his you know find everything and kind of get back in the swing of everything after being out of the league for several months. And um, Stolars can be the backup for a while, and then they can kind of reevaluate maybe. You know, further into the season, you never know. There could be an injury or something like that. But, you know, if everything, all three goalies are still, you know, doing okay and healthy, then maybe we'll see a change down the road. They might be, you know, more likely to squeeze a goalie through once the season starts and teams have their stuff set a little bit more. So it might be a little bit of strategy there as well as doing what they feel is right for Spencer Knight. Uh, a couple of key prospects in Long Island, uh, William Dufour, and uh, Ruslan Ishikov, both Demoto, both had good camps. I know Dufour had an especially good camp. Looks like he made a ton of progress in uh, good work over the summer. But uh, I didn't expect him to make the club. But I know he's one of the more interesting prospects because they don't have a ton of them in their organization. And I do expect him to get more games last than he did last year, which I believe was only one or two. Um, who else we got here? Oh, Matthew Maggio, also another Islanders prospect. Um, he's also a, an interesting one to watch. His development, he could be important for them to down the road too. Uh, Hendricks Lapierre in Washington also was cut and Brennan Othman in the Rangers organization also was sent down. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that have been uh, New York media talking about how Othman has outplayed players like uh, Alexi Lafreniere and wondering if they might be able to grab his spot. Obviously, they're not going to just throw Lafreniere on waivers, but there is a lot of talk as we've talked about in recent videos that 
maybe it's time to move on and find a trade and kind of swap them some things out and maybe give a chance to Othman. Uh, he's certainly going to be there at some point. Um, I think he's going to looks like Will Cooley is going to fight find his way onto this NHL roster with the Rangers to start the season. I wondered if they might be able to find a way to keep Cooley and Othman, but somebody else would have to go. And even to keep Cooley, they're going to have to probably knock a veteran out. I don't know if we'll see a veteran guy go on waivers or how that's going to impact things um, that way, but some interesting names to watch and uh, obviously guys like Cooley and Othman especially pushing Lafreniere and he hasn't had a good preseason, so we'll keep curious to follow that situation as well so let me know your thoughts on all today's uh, roster cuts pto releases and waiver news you see anybody getting picked up for tomorrow lots more news likely coming on the same topic over the next few days as teams trim down to get ready for next week's beginning of the nhl 23-24 season thanks very much for watching and i will catch you next time 